the Buddha focused his whole teaching career on dealing with the problem of suffering. As he one time said, that's all he taught, suffering and the end of suffering. Suffering here is primarily mental suffering, the pain we feel. The word dukkha in Pali, in its everyday meaning, is just pain. It's mainly the mental pain we feel, which can have to do with physical pain in the present moment or just mental issues purely in the mind, old issues that hang on inside and weigh us down. And here the Buddha is offering us a path out. When you think of the path, it's good to think of it as a series of allies in dealing with your pain, particularly the first and last factors of the path, right view and right concentration. With right concentration, you take the breath as your ally. You try to step out of purely mental concerns. Focus on the physical sensation of the breathing. And then see what you're going to make that comfortable. When we talk about the breath, it's not just the in and out movement of the air, it's the whole energy flow through the body. And a lot of times the problem is going to be right there in that energy flow. As the Buddha said, one of the reasons we suffer is because we breathe in ignorance. And that leads us to hold things in strange ways in the body. And so now we bring the light of awareness to how we breathe. and how the energy is moving, and how we can shape that energy in a way so it's a good place to stay. And this way you have a place not only to step out from your thoughts, but also step out into a sense of well-being. You're going to need that sense of well-being because you're going to start looking at your mind and to gain some insight into how the mind is creating suffering. You have to remember it's doing it out of ignorance, lack of skill. Or as John Swat would sometimes say, it's our own stupidity that's making us suffer. We don't like to see the stupid things going on in the mind, and so we cover them up. And this is one of the reasons why the suffering hangs on. Part of us refuses to see why we're suffering. And so you have to prepare the mind so it's ready for anything. Whatever's going to come up, whatever you're going to see about the mind, things you may not like to see about yourself. but you're not going to get rid of them until you see that they're there. They've been there for a long time, but they don't have to be there forever. There are ways of letting them go. But you can't let them go until you see them. You can't see them until you admit them. And you won't admit them until you have a sense of well-being that you can fall back on so you don't feel threatened by the unsavory or unpleasant things coming up in the mind. So. Trying to get a sense of well-being here with the breath, in whichever part of the body you can find it, focus there. Sometimes you can get the whole body to feel good, other times only one part. But be happy to take that one part and hang out there. And then as that one part gets more and more comfortable, then you can think of the good energy spreading from that one part. And see how far it goes. Think of it seeping through and around and dissolving any hard or tight spots in the body. There will be some that resist. And sometimes the resistance is not just physical, there's a mental resistance that's going on as well. But you have to be patient. And one of the tricks to patience is not focusing on the things that are hard to bear, but focusing on the, the allies you've got, the friends you've got inside. So you're not constantly harping, <clears throat> excuse me, harping on how difficult a particular physical pain is or mental pain is. You can instead focus on the things that are going well. And that gets into the second main ally you've got in the path, and that's right view. Gaining some understanding on why we suffer. Part of it's because of old karma, part of it's because of new karma. And karma tends to be regarded as a very unfriendly teaching, but it can actually be your ally. Remember to begin with it. 
right here in the present moment as you're seeing things coming in from the past. You have the choice in how you're going to relate to them. The simple fact that a potential is there doesn't mean you have to suffer from it. As the Buddha points out many times, the state of mind you bring to the results of old bad karma will totally determine the extent to which you're going to suffer. This is if you have a fine that you have to pay. And if you're poor in the present moment, it, the, the fine is going to exhaust your resources. But if you're rich in the present moment, you can pay it off easily. And rich here means having a larger view. Because the teaching on karma not only talks about the mechanics of how things get shaped in the present moment, but they have a very large time frame. This is one of the reasons why we think of thoughts of goodwill to all beings, goodwill, equanimity, all the Brahma Vahars to all beings before we meditate, is to open up the mind to a little bit of infinity, at least just for a few moments. That's infinity in space. We'll also think in terms of, as the Buddha says, the inconceivable beginning of time. And so some of the karma you're dealing with goes from way back. They talk about karmic justice, and it's hard to say it really is just. That's something that may have been done when you were a very different kind of person a long time ago. It catches up with you now. But see it simply as cause and effect, and it's very impersonal. It's not out there to catch you. And it's simply the fact that you've done something bad in the past doesn't mean you have deserved to suffer now. Because as I said, you have this choice. The potentials that come up, you can deal with them in a way that's overwhelmed by them, or you can deal with them in a way where you overwhelm them. You have this larger frame of mind. Have some goodwill for whoever you were that did that unskillful thing in the past. Have some compassion, and then have some equanimity, and then learn how to extend those thoughts to yourself. So it takes a lot of the personal sting out of the stories that go with a lot of our mental pain. We're in a much larger time frame. And that too helps you deal with the things that are coming up right now, with the sense you have some allies. You can frame the stories in different ways. And if you find that the mind resists, well, watch it for a while and see what the resistance is coming from. Because one of the peculiar things about the mind is that a lot of the painful things that we carry around have their allure. Part of the mind likes them. And again, that's something we don't normally want to see, but once the mind gets settled in the present moment with a sense of well-being, it has this much larger time frame, much larger sense of the world we're in, then you're in a better position to see, okay, this is what the mind is going for. And when you can see it clearly, as I said, it's when you see it clearly that you can let it go. But this requires patience. But as I said, patience gets a lot easier when you have allies. You've got the ally in right concentration, you've got the ally in right view. So you're not alone as you're facing these things. You've got the Dharma and you've got the example of the Buddha and the Sangha, and they're all rooting for you. So accept their help. It's offered freely. <laughs>